Welcome where you're at home with Jim and Joy and you are an important part of our EWTN family and we're so delighted that you have welcomed us into your home. We would love to hear from you. So we're taking your comments and your questions today. If you're watching, it's Monday. We are here very alive. Please give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460. If you are calling and you are outside North America, you can always reach us at 205-271-2980. And you can always send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com and check us out on Facebook. Well, the question for today's show is this. If you were to speak to your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren about the important issues for a person of faith, what would you tell them? Yeah. Have you told them? Are you thinking about telling them? Yeah. Um, because they need to know who you are, what you believe, <clears throat> the God that you love and serve, and what matters to you. Yeah. And so we're gonna yeah. have a great guest the rest of this week and Stephen Gabriel, and he's authored a beautiful book. Yeah. It's, um, it's entitled it's Hope for Your Grandchildren, talking to the third generation about what matters. And you saw in that question of the day, it had quotation marks, because that's the question that he poses mm -hmm. right at the beginning. We want you to call us, we want you to email us, get in touch with us, and think about that question again. What would you want your grandchildren and grand great-grandchildren uh, to know is important to you as a person of faith, what would you write to them in a letter? Or what would you tell them personally what's important to you? And I, I, just, I love the question, mm -hmm. and I've started to make a list of things that I really want my grandchildren and great-grandchildren to know. I think they know it, I've said it, but to put it down in print mm -hmm. and to write is, is a really good thing, an important thing. And so we want to model what we believe, our love for life, our own marriage, our family, uh, our faith. So modeling is probably the most essential and important thing. But we need to put words to mm -hmm. that. And, and that's what Stephen does in his book. And that's what we're trying to say here. What would, what's important to you? You know, what comes to mind to you? For me, it's the incarnation of Jesus Christ. And I can unpack that in the next segment if we need to. That's my conversion. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, the Word became flesh. What are the implications? And I know what those implications are for me. And never thinking, speaking, or touching another human being without looking for the face of Christ in that human being. As you do it to the least, you do it to me. This is what I want my kids, my grandkids, my great-grandchildren to know. This was essential and, and, and so seminal to, to my life. I want you to know that. Mm. It, or it might, what's it for you? What comes well, for me, <laughs> it, it is my faith journey, is the intimate union with Jesus. And I pray daily that none of them would, would ever per perish without the saving knowledge of Jesus. I pray daily that they would grow up to be holy mm. men and women of God. Because I want them to know that you can have an intimate relationship with the God of the universe, with God our Father, to know God our Father, to know Jesus his Son, and to know the power of the Holy Spirit at work in their lives, and to activate yeah. the Trinity daily in your life, yeah. and the power of the Holy Spirit in that intimate union. I, I, I want them to know that their faith needs to be alive and active and yeah. they need to read the Bible. Yeah. They need to pray like, you know, we were sharing in the, in the green room in the back, you know, everything has to happen with great intentionality. You have mm -hmm. to be intentional about what you do because you aim for nothing, you're bound to hit nothing. Yeah. And so we have to be intentional. We're intentional in our marriage, in yeah. our faith, in what we decide to do, our family culture. Mm -hmm. You know, um, or do you just, is your family culture, you play, you watch TV, you, what, what else do you do, <laughs> so right? The, so the question is, if you are to speak to your grandchildren and great-grandchildren about the important issues for a person, that would be you, a person of faith, what would you tell them? Would you call us? Would you email us? Let us know what's important to you that your children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren should know. 1-800-221-9460. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away.
Welcome back. Well, remember that today we're taking your questions and your comments on our show. So if you're watching, it's Monday, it's live, give us a jingle. 1-800-221-9460. If you are calling and you are outside North America, you can always reach us at 205-271-2980. And you can always send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at mm -hmm. EWTN.com. Well, the question is this. If you were to speak to your grandchildren and great-grandchildren about the important issues for a person of faith, what would you tell yeah. them? Yeah. And I, I have a litany of things that I tell them, and I tell them now. I tell them right now. Um, so what I do is I tell them, those that are baptized, and all of them are, that you're marked as Christ's own forever, that your life is not your own, that you, be you belong to Jesus, and he, he's the um, author yes. of your life, and so you, this side of heaven, need to cultivate that intimate union with yeah. him. Yeah. And so, um, and one of the other things that I do, and it's very simple, is, um, you know, I pray daily. We pray daily for our grandchildren. You say, well, I pray for my grandchildren too. And that is good and right. You should pray for your children, your grandchildren, your brothers and sisters, all those people in your sphere of, of, of your circle and influence. I have this picture and um, this picture stays in my uh, devotional to the Daily Magnificat. So they're showing you that picture. Now that picture, what I do on that picture every single day is I bless them by name after Jim and I have said our prayers. So I go right across, I bless them I, in the, with the sign of the cross. I put the sign of the cross over each and every one of their heads, say their name, <laughs> their parents, bless them. And then I put my hand over them and say, God be with them all today. Bless their going out and their coming in today. The other thing I do is when it's their birthday or their parents' anniversary, I, we made up these cards and in their birthday cards, and all of our grandchildren get birthday cards with a nice monetary gift inside of them, I give them a little card and the question is this, and they've been getting this question for a really long time. It's the old time. catechism question. It's yeah. the old catechism question. What is the, most, what is the most important question in the world? Why did God make me? It's a good thought to have on your birthday, or if you're being a teenager and you're confused and you don't know why God the made answer. you. Well, he made me to know him, love him, serve him, so that I'll have peace in my heart in this world and happy uh -huh. forever in the yeah. next. Yeah. So they each get one of these little things. And it's just a reminder to let them know that we are praying for them daily. When we gather with them at family things, yeah. we always tell them how much we're praying for them. And, you, you know, for me, my prayer life is my intimate connection to them, to their parents daily too, because you know we have 17, I can't be everywhere, I can't be in their lives or what they're doing, but we tell them no matter what, your Nona and your Babo are praying for you. And you know what they'll do with that? First of all, they're very grateful, or when they're going through trials, they'll call us and ask us to pray for them. They'll say, hey, this is what's going on. Nona, can you pray? Babo, can you pray? I got this going on. Because we've created, we've made a way, we've made a pathway where they can travel back and forth to us in our hearts and, and with our yeah, prayers. That's beautifully shared. And again, we're thinking about <coughs> as a person of faith communicating to your grandchildren and great-grandchildren, what do you want them to know is so important for you about the faith and the difference it makes in your life and in your world? And the difficulties, you know, trying to live that way, you be honest about that, and, and you're sharing who you are. So you would write letters, not only, because you say, I pray for each one, and I make the sign of the cross. You would write that in a letter form mm -hmm. to, to, to the grandchildren and say, this has been my life. I'm an intercessor for you, and, and I believe it has power, and I believe to speak a word of blessing on people. I pray that you'll continue this tradition. I pray that you will be open to life, God may grace you with children, you know, my, my grandchildren or great-grandchildren, and that you too every day would pray for your grandchildren, for your grand, great-grandchildren, that you would pray, that you would bless them, that you'd have an image of them, that you would pray. Prayer's essential in my life. I mean, that would be the letter right. that, that you would write about that. 
or about, as I said earlier, for me it's the incarnation. And it's understanding that Jesus' face is in every face. And so I've communicated that to our grandchildren and hopefully great-grandchildren at some point through prayer and saying that I understand I don't have the right to relate to you or Nona or anybody directly. Mm -hmm. I always try and relate through Jesus Christ. And, and I recommend that to you, not to relate to people one-on-one, -on -one, but through the mediation of Jesus Christ. I want my children, they know that, yes. grandchildren, great-grandchildren to know this is what their babo did, this is mm -hmm. what their great-grandfather did, this is the way he lived his life. Maybe this should make a difference in my life. We have a comment here, Joy? Okay, we have Catherine from Oregon, and she says that teaching about the guardian angel is very important, mm. what she teaches her children, teaching yeah. them about the presence of their guardian angel in their lives. And that is very good. Yeah, I didn't think of that <clears> at all. <throat> right, because, you know, and we pray every day. We pray the St. Michael prayer. We also pray for our guardian angels. It is the guardian angel prayer. Right, yeah. and there is a guardian angel prayer. And so that children um, are aware, that first of all, that they've been given an angel that their angel is going to accompany them all the days of their life here on earth and bring them before Jesus yeah. when they die. And, and so <clears throat> in a letter form, it's, it's not only the theology of angels and so on, do you have any experience? Does she have any experience of a sense of an angel or just a faith about angels or any story about mm -hmm. an angel? Mm -hmm. So you can say that, you know, this is what it's meant in my life. And so there are these angelic beings, both demonic and, and of goodwill, right. and you have a guardian angel from the moment of your conception. There's always mm -hmm. been an angel. We, and, and, and if I was writing that letter, I would say, we work in a pregnancy medical center, and we have 30% of the women who come to us, Her Choice Birmingham Women's Center, they're considering an abortion. And we pray before that time, this would be part of my letter. And I want you to know, grandson, granddaughter, I want you to know that we would pray for that guardian angel of that baby. Mm -hmm. And we would pray for the guardian angel of the mother that's considering that. Right. And we pray for the guardian angel of the father that's helped to procreate this child. And we pray for our guardian angels that everyone would cooperate and work to the saving of this child and for the saving of this mother. Does that guarantee? Well, it doesn't guarantee, but it's better that we pray that way and solicit the help of angels. So to communicate that to your grandchildren, you know, my, my grandma and grandpa, they, they really believed in angels. Mm -hmm. And they've got an experience of angels. Well, my grandma saw my granddad's angel. You said you saw mm -hmm. my angel one mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. I didn't see him, but you right. said you saw him. And it's I like, could write a whole chapter on angels. Just about all it's my... Just, it's just a letter. You can't write a chapter. <laughs> a letter. A letter <laughs> on, on letter. angels. So they, they know experientially because there are spirits out there and I want them to know the warfare that is out there and the power that they've been given by God Almighty to battle every day, that they're not alone, that the Holy Spirit wants to come up alongside of them and help them with, with their battles and struggles yeah. the, over their own flesh and then all of also the spirit world. What a great world. letter. You know, dear <clears throat> grandson, angels are real. Mm -hmm. I'm aware of them and I pray that you will be too. Yeah. I pray for your angel. I mean, that was powerful. Okay, we have a comment. It said, they should be taught to pray when they go to sleep, when they wake up and when they eat. We have beautiful prayers that they can memorize. In this way, they develop a prayer life, which will deepen as they continue to grow. Yeah. Yes, and it's good to have memorized prayers, right? And in the Catholic Church, we have a lot of memorized prayers, but we also want to teach them of this ongoing conversation that you can have with Jesus throughout the day, <laughs> from the time that you wake up, from the time you go to sleep, so that you have this intimate relationship with Jesus, that you're just not out there on your own and you're disconnected from the creator of you, and you're always asking him, Jesus, why did you make me? What is my purpose? Lord, what, what, mm -hmm. do you, what would you have me to do with my life? That's How right. am I to serve you? Yeah. How am I to love you? How am I supposed to yeah. respond in this um, situation that I Set find myself in? Culture. Okay, we have Rena, and she's calling us from California, and we would love to hear from her. So, Rena, please, your question or your comment on our show today. We'd love to have you. Well, thank you, Joy. Joy, I just want to thank you so much. You just, you just, you just make me cry, you know, because when you say that the relationship with Jesus that you pray your grandchildren have, 
and I pray for my grandson that he has it too. And you know, you really get it. You really get what we need, what we want for them. And I, I appreciate it so much. And I pray to St. Monica, and then I think, St. Monica, are you listening to me? You know, mm-hmm. you're probably, because he has a university education, he's a smart boy, but he just fell away from the university, and he's, you know, he's very arrogant and wants to do things himself, and he just, you know, he doesn't, and this relationship with Christ, I mean, you need it, because I wouldn't be able to live without knowing that God is behind me and with me through my surgeries mm-hmm. and, you know, childbirth and everything else. And I want to thank you for for, for, for presenting that honest, thoughtful, beautiful, beautiful Th- thought. Thank you so very much for those comments, and that sounds like a letter to me, or something that you want to comment to your your child, grandchild, great grandchild, uh, that you would write. This is what prayer means to me. I don't know how I would live my life with all that I've gone through in sickness and all of this without prayer, without knowing that I'm intimately united with the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to face hardships in life. You're going to face things. It comes to all of us, the, the good and the bad, rain and storms come upon them, but I want you to know you could weather every storm through the power of knowing God through the intimacy of prayer. And, and that's, that's what we're talking about here. You know, what do you want to share with your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren? Sometimes we think, well, they know that. Well, do they know that? Mm, assume nothing. Assume nothing. So, so you, you're trying to model <laughs> that, but you say, I want to put this down in words, what mm-hmm. you've been seeing me do. And it's difficult to do some of these things, but I really pray that, that this would be a blessing to you and that this would be central in your life as well as it has been in mine and maybe in, in your parents, you know, yes. before them. And, you know, when you see um, maybe some vices that are looming large in the lives of your children, your grandchildren, really pray, intercede that God would move in if they're being prideful, that um, they would know the virtue of humility. Um, and, you know, Lord, make them humble. Yeah. And so th- those are ways that you can, you know, when you see something rear its ugly head, you know, you want to nip that in the bud with, with great prayer and great love. Yeah, you know, well, let's go, to, we have to pitch to this. Uh, <clears throat> the 2024 Eucharistic Congress is taking place next July the 17th through the 21st in Indianapolis, Indiana. Registering through EW10.com forward slash Eucharist will provide you with discounted registration. Thanks so much for your participation. May we pass on a wonderful legacy to our grandchildren and great-grandchildren by God's grace and mercy. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, before we wrap up today's show, and that show went really fast. I enjoyed it. (laughs) We're going to go to Rome to check in with beautiful Joan Lewis. Now, Joan, what is the latest news from Rome? Well, greetings, Jim and Joy. And you know, today, I want to look back just a bit at a very historical, unprecedented event in the Catholic Church. And this occurred on Sunday, September 10th, when an entire family, a Polish family, was beatified. And this happened in Poland. They were thus collectively honored. Now this was the Alma family of Markowa, Poland. Nine members, mother, father, and seven children. And actually the last child was born the very moment that its mother, Victoria, was killed. Now why were they killed? Well, the family was found to have been hiding and protecting eight Jewish people from the Goldman, Grunfeld, and Didner families. The, uh, somebody reported them, the authorities came, the Nazis came, they raided the home, they went up to the attic where the uh, Jewish families had been living, and everyone was killed, all members of the Alma family, and the house was set on fire. Now, this happened on March 24th, 1944. And the last child was born, the uh, we do not know boy, unnamed child, was born the moment its mother Victoria was killed. And interestingly enough, on August 31st, the Vatican came out with a statement that said that the seventh unnamed child, in the martyrdom of the parents, 
this child received a baptism of, of blood. What a, a horror, horrible story, and yet we have seven children and their parents, nine people, an entire family, now blessed. Now, of course, Pope Francis on that Sunday, September 10th, spoke of the beatification ceremony in Markova, Poland, and there were 30,000 people there, by the way, from many countries, including Germany, Italy, Poland, of course, um, Ukraine and Belarus, and a couple of other countries. Now, what the Pope said was, he called the Almas a model to imitate in our efforts to do good and serve those who are in need. In response to the hatred and violence that characterized those times, they embraced an evangelical love. The Almas represented a ray of light in the darkness of World War II. And the Pope then, of course, urged all Christians to follow the example of this family by opposing strength of arms with charity and violent rhetoric with tenacious prayer. Now, it was Cardinal Marcello Semeraro, who's prefect of the Vatican Dicastery for the Causes of Saints, who presided at the ceremony, con celebrating, get this, with seven cardinals and 1,000 priests. Now, Cardinal said, the Alma family home became an inn where the despised, the outcast, and death-stricken were welcomed and cared for. Without ever having an uttered a word, because he then spoke of the little child, without ever having uttered a word, today the little blessed cries out to the modern world to welcome, love, and protect life, especially that of the defenseless and marginalized from the moment of conception until natural death. The child's innocent voice, said the Cardinal, seeks to shake the consciences of society where abortion, euthanasia, and contempt for life are seen as a burden and are rampant, such emotions like this. And all I can say at this point is that the, the, his, this historical, unprecedented moment in the church should give all of us pause for reflection. As a matter of fact, all of us should be called to cry out to the world to protect and defend life at all times and everywhere. So on that note, let's look up to this new blessed family and back to you, a beautiful family. Joan, thank you so much for that clear and passionate sharing. Uh, they should be witnesses to us all, especially at this moment mm -hmm. when the family is under such attack. Join us next time for an interview with Stephen Gabriel. Stephen is the author of the book, Hope for Your Grandchildren, talking to the third generation about what matters. That was what our show today was really based upon. How are you sharing with your grandchildren, great-grandchildren, what really matters to you? God bless you. God bless all of your loved ones. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.